Live from downtown Macon, this is WGXA News Live on YouTube. Good evening, Middle Georgia. I'm Amanda Peralta. And I'm Greg Lloyd. Thanks for watching WGXA News at 530. Well, another scorching day of heat across Middle Georgia, and it feels like temperatures are in the triple digits, and it is just so hot. It certainly <laughs> is. Meteorologist Ryan Miranda, Amanda says, unfortunately, hotter days are ahead, Middle Georgia. And in his words, <laughs> It's miserable. <laughs> it really is so bad. It's just been so hot across middle Georgia. Looking out over Mercy University, it doesn't look too bad out here from the air conditioning. There's even some football players. Man, do I feel bad for them that they're having to practice out here in some of this heat. Hopefully some of them are also able to take some water breaks or be inside of the air conditioning for a few because feels like temperatures in the triple digits currently feels like 103 in Macon. Feels like 103 in Milledgeville, 104 in Hawkinsville and 101 right now in Butler. So planning out the next five days, we'll keep weather warm days now through Sunday for this extreme heat tomorrow up to about 97, but really still into the triple digits Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So still a good idea to be staying cool. And we are issuing another weather warm day for all of the weekend. So we'll finally be in some more comfortable air mass by Monday, but still temperatures over the next five days ranging right around 100 degrees. We have a heat alert effect for the rest of today. I'll talk about when rain chances come back in the forecast all coming up in your full forecast, Greg. All right, thanks, Ryan. It's a great time to download that WGXA weather app to keep track of those intense heat index numbers throughout the week. Just scan the QR code on your screen to download the app for free to your smart device. Ryan is back shortly with more on the high temperatures as well as your 10 day forecast. This year's legislative session will resume in January, but work is still being done, including on Georgia's don't so called don't say gay bill. It's back in the spotlight today. Our Brianna Cook is live at the Capitol right now following testimony for those for and against the bill. Brianna. Greg and Amanda, this is a bill that we've been following since the beginning and it has since been rewritten and has been tabled. But today the don't say gay bill is back up for discussion. It is not a don't say gay bill. Senate Bill 88 has been nicknamed Georgia's Don't Say Gay Bill. It requires zero gender affirming conversations in school until a child reaches the age of 16. Senator Cardin Summers is the sponsor of the bill. He says its purpose is to protect Georgia children. I don't care if it's their children, your children, or my children. It's not the responsibility of the person in charge to teach these kids what they feel is right when it comes to gender. That's the basically the crux of this bill. And if they have a problem with that, if people have a problem with that, then they truly have issues. Because the reality of it is, is this a child protection bill? The bill has been changed several times and has since been tabled due to discrepancies over the language. The first version of the bill would have restricted schools, camp counselors, and other authority figures from answering children's questions about gender identity or sexual orientation. A later version would have required all local boards of education to develop a policy for dealing with parental involvement and child privacy related to issues of gender identity. Now in a Senate committee on Wednesday about education and youth, Students, teachers, and advocates testified to state leaders. Michaela Arciaga, Georgia Director of Advocacy, was in the meeting. She says she opposes the bill and says if they do plan on passing it, it needs to be seriously reworded. About this bill is it's not actually about not saying gay. I think it will go that direction. Um, this bill doesn't differentiate between sexual orientation and gender identity, and so there is some concern that it's going to act as a catch-all. But if we are going to supersede local control by telling them they have to create a policy like this, then we need to also make sure that we are protecting our, our vulnerable kids and putting language in that is evidence-based and creates safer environments for every child. Francesca Rue is a student advocate. She says the bill will do more harm than good for children. Students are individual uh, autonomous people with their own problems, their own character traits, and their own identities. And so when um, you make it prohibitive, when a, a sponsor of a bill like this it tries to make it prohibitive to talk about a fundamental nature of who someone is, um, all it does is really put a target on the back of that demographic. Cardin says the bill is to involve parents, and he is open to editing the bill. And if the parents are okay with it, do what you got to do. Do what you want to do. If the parents say they want to opt out and understand this, this is before the age of 16. 
This is not any after, anything after that. Age of consent in Georgia. That's what I tried to portray as the intent of the bill. If that's not what came across, then I sincerely think that we need to have a little more talk, a little more work on it. And obviously, you know, we can we can we can narrow it on down. The bill is still tabled as of right now, since we are no longer in a legislative session, but we are expecting to hear more conversation about this bill next legislative session. Reporting live in Atlanta, Brianna Cook, WGXA News. Thank you, Brianna. And tonight, the Warner Robins Police Department is in mourning after the death of booking and transport officer Curtis Hodge overnight. The department says Hodge was loved and respected by many and that they are heartbroken over the loss of such a great man. It's a local crime now and a Perry man who stabbed his wife to death just 10 days after their marriage will be eligible for a second chance to live his own life. Matthew Kendrick received a life sentence for the January 2022 murder of his wife Shateria Watkins. Surveillance cameras at Creek Whip Park caught Kendrick stabbing his wife nine times inside a car. Watkins was 20 years old when Kendrick murdered her. He'll serve 30 years in prison before he's eligible for parole. Another murder case from House and County is expected to go before the state Supreme Court today. Morgan Baker is appealing his conviction in the shooting death of Tamarco Head outside a nightclub in 2019. Baker claims the court made an error in allowing a music video of him holding a gun, arguing it doesn't establish him being at the shooting and unfairly sways the jury's perception on the case. The state argues the video is important to their theory in Baker's guilt in the crime. And tonight, a live look outside of the Fulton County Jail, where several members of former President Donald Trump's co-defendants in Georgia have, in the subversion case, have turned themselves in. Kayla Gaskins joins us now from Washington. With the deadline to turn themselves in, fast approaching. Are you going to surrender today in Fulton County, Rudy? Donald Trump and 18 co-defendants making their way to Georgia for accusations of meddling in the state's election process in 2020. Former Trump ally Rudy Giuliani speaking with the press before turning himself in Wednesday. I'm going to Fulton County to comply with the law, which I always do. I'll, uh, I don't know if I plead today, but if I do, I plead not guilty. And I get photographed, isn't that nice? A, a mugshot for the man who probably put the worst criminals of the 20th century in jail. At least six of the 19 charged in connection with the case have been booked in the Fulton County Jail, all released on bond. Trump will turn himself in Thursday, agreeing to a $200,000 bond. It's still unclear if he'll take a mugshot or get fingerprinted. Lawyer Alan Dershowitz says either will likely increase Trump's support. If he's required to take a mugshot, he will use that to his uh, benefit and likewise with fingerprints. And so um, it's really up to Georgia how how far they want to push this. According to Dershowitz, he predicted all the charges against Trump in his book, Get Trump, except for the RICO charge in Georgia, a law used to prosecute the mafia. Dershowitz comparing the alleged criminal activity in Trump's RICO case to the actions he and fellow Democrats took on behalf of Al Gore after the close 2000 election. We lobbied uh, state officials. We sought recounts. Uh, we complained that we needed to find 600 uh, more votes to change the election and never occurred to anybody that we could be violating a RICO statute. On Truth Social, Trump standing by his actions, writing he will proudly be arrested. This case in Georgia could shape up to be the most transparent of all Trump's cases because state law allows TV cameras in court. It could possibly give us the first video of Trump in a courtroom. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. <music> More than a half dozen Republicans who are trying to knock Donald Trump from the party top spot in the race for the White House will take to the stage tonight in Wisconsin. It's the first presidential debate and one Trump has decided not to attend. So does this open the door for another candidate to stroll through and change the tone of the race? Scott Thuman is on the ground in Milwaukee with an exclusive preview of tonight's debate. Scott. Well, it's not the entire field here tonight, but a large chunk of it, and they'll be trying to find those breakout moments, something to separate themselves from the rest of the pack, earn some chatter and more importantly, some donors and supporters. But pundits will tell you that at least for now, 
This is a race for second place. The matchup in Milwaukee certain to catapult the presidential race to a new level, but some of the spectacle missing with Donald Trump choosing not to attend, pointing to a new poll showing most Republicans, 74 percent, say they would support him in a general election. Trump's surrogate, Kerry Lake, says there's no need for Trump to take part. Real clear politics shows him up 40 points. This is almost an unheard of advantage. He's already done the job. He's proven himself. At the same time, never seen someone indicted four times. How much does that play into it? Actually, I've noticed that every time he's indicted, his poll numbers go up. Meanwhile, many see it as a better chance to introduce themselves. An opportunity, says former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. But the one-time U.S. attorney also wants to hold Trump, there or not, accountable. And I'm convinced we can't win with Donald Trump, and that's the whole purpose of this debate is Who's the right alternative that can lead our party? A sentiment sure to be echoed by another former prosecutor, Chris Christie. The American people want to see is, what's your plan for the future? Are you strong enough to be able to implement them? All the expected fighting, though, is also a worry for the party, aware in the end they'll have to coalesce or risk the White House. We recognize that Democrats time and time again, they have their disagreements behind closed doors, but they come together, they unite and they win. And so as a Republican Party, I think next year we're looking forward, hopefully better than ever before coming together. One of the big questions is just how much attention will the candidates really get out of this debate? Keep in mind, Trump is trying to drive viewers to watch his interview tonight instead and then tomorrow. He turns himself into Atlanta authorities for an arrest. Again, all of that drawing focus away from this debate. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'm Scott Thuman. One Middle Georgia educator is looking for a career change as she declares her candidacy for the House of Representatives. Tangie Herring is challenging the Georgia House Minority Leader James Beverly for District 143. She made the announcement at East Macon's Mill Hill Community Arts Center this morning. Herring says she plans to focus on community priorities like public safety, improving schools, economic development, accessible health care, especially neighborhood focused mental health services. I do want to focus on mental health uh, for all students in Macon Bibb County. There's a way that we can do that. Um, I also want to be a, age, a change agent where we are working to revitalize neighborhoods and that everybody is sitting at the same table and everybody's a part of the growth that's happening here in Bibb County. You can find the link to Herring's campaign website at WGXA.TV. Well, Monroe County property owners are getting the opportunity to let the Board of Education know how they feel about a proposed increase to their tax bill. According to the school board, they're hosting a public hearing earlier today about a proposed millage rate increase. That increase is being proposed in response to declining property value due to Georgia Power's plant sharer closing two power units. Now, if the increase is approved, a home worth $200,000, that homeowner will pay $100 more in taxes. So um, we're looking at a millage increase. Not, we don't like to do a tax increase. It's not something we take lightly. But to close this $2 million gap, um, that's the best solution we have. If you missed the earlier meeting, there's still a chance to, for your voice to be heard. In fact, in a few minutes at 6 o'clock tonight, the Board of Education building, they're hosting another meeting. And in Warner Robins, the City Council is also giving residents the chance to share their thoughts on a proposed tax hike. The city hosting a series of public hearings on the matter in September. The proposed hike would increase 8.17% for city residents in Houston County and a 3.43% for city residents in Peach County. All the meetings will be held at City Hall and all concerned citizens are invited to participate. And in May Bibb, leaders and the Pleasant Hill Neighborhood Organization want to hear from the community on how Linear Park can improve. The two are teaming up for a night of fun at the park with treats, raffles, and just some summer fun the whole family can enjoy. If you can't make it tonight, though, the Pleasant Hill Neighborhood Organization will be hosting its next meeting Saturday, September the 9th at the L.H. Williams Community Center. The warm days continue for the extreme heat and feels like temperatures that we're dealing with. Today, the air temperature is pretty seasonable, 92 in Macon, 93 right now in Alberta, and 93 degrees in Dublin. Although when you factor in the humidity, it feels much hotter. But we're also dealing with some pretty poor air quality with this heat dome over top of us. 
Our air quality has been the unhealthy for sensitive groups, so if you have any respiratory issues or the very young or elderly, you may want to monitor your symptoms, but it's really just too hot to be outside anyways. Here's those actual feels like temperatures. Currently feels like 103 right now in Macon, 106 in Warner Robins, 98 in Eastman, and it feels like 105 right now in Forsyth. And really this heat is not going to be going anywhere for the next four days. So we continue weather warm days through this Sunday. Air temperatures from 95 to 103. We still do have some heat alerts in effect into for today. But we'll likely see more as we get towards the weekend. Heat and values ranging from 105 to 110. So here's the numbers breaking it down day by day. Tomorrow might actually not be too bad. Heat index up to about 96 degrees, but Friday, Saturday and Sundays when we keep those weather warm days with those feels like temperatures nearing 105, which is in that dangerous category. And then on Monday we get back to more seasonable heat, really something to look forward to. Satellite YouTube along with Skywatch radar showing we have a very strong heat dome that's over top of us right now. You can even see the storms rolling around this high pressure. The other week when we were having those storms come through, we were getting these storms that are pushing through Pennsylvania right now, but we're not having to deal with that. This is this is farther eastward, but really it's providing so much heat. There's about 18 states right now that are under an excessive heat warning. That's that dark purple color and we might we're dealing with some heat advisories for today, but it's just been so hot for the summer for many of us. Tomorrow, though, may not be as bad as today. Waking up with temperatures feeling like they're in the low 70s at lunchtime. It feels like temp of 89 and temperatures will be into the upper 90s for those feels like temperatures for tomorrow afternoon. Also in the tropics right now, we're watching tropical storm Franklin. This right now is impacting portions of the Dominican Republic and Haiti is a tropical storm, although as it moves back up into the open Atlantic, looks like it could intensify now into a category two storm not going to be impacting us here though in middle Georgia, but we'll keep an eye on it as we get through the rest of hurricane season tonight back here at home down to 72 degrees the overnight low and making under mostly clear skies and in your 10 day forecast really no good rain chances for the next four days with all these weather warm days in place bright sunshine that high pressure is dominating our weather up to 97 tomorrow Friday even hotter up to 100 degrees Saturday looks to be the hottest up to 100 to 102 degrees. That's 10 degrees above average. Sunday back up to 99 degrees. Monday, we're finally getting a breath of fresh air. We get some storms back in the forecast, some seasonable heat, 94 degrees the high on Tuesday. Some scattered thunderstorms, 93. Really would like to rain to knock down some of this heat. And next Wednesday, a few more scattered storms, a high again of 93 degrees. So lastly, here's your Harrison's Body Shop fishing game forecast. Peaks at 6.40 a.m. and 8.40 p.m. Amanda. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Flooding from extreme weather is becoming more common, and we're seeing that play out on the West Coast right now. Angela Brown explains why flooding could become an even bigger issue for homeowners. Climate Central sending out an alert as Hillary was forming, saying intense storms will bring more flooding that could lead to more water in homes, and mold can form days after a storm. Incredible video capturing flooding at Cedar City, Utah, as Hillary moved through. At one point, water in the emergency room at Intermountain Healthcare Hospital. There was a lot of water intrusion into the building, so there's going to be a mold problem. A lot of the carpets are soaked. Mold infested homes and businesses, a problem that could become more frequent. Dr. Mike Van Dyke from the Center of Health, Work and Environment points to climate change. As the temperatures get higher, you know, we're seeing more severe storms and more frequent storms, and I, I think that's what we're going to have to live with moving forward. And this year, the mold risk is elevated. NOAA now forecasting an above average hurricane season with an expected 14 to 21 named storms. Those places that, that aren't prepared for large volumes of water being poured on them, um, that's the places where we're going to see, you know, the most houses get damaged just because the infrastructure isn't strong enough to really support the removal of the water in those areas. Health experts say that mold can create health problems. It can make your asthma worse and also respiratory infections. Reporting in Washington, D.C., I'm Angela Brown. Well, WGXA wants to help Central Georgia families struggling with diaper care access or di access to diapers this summer. Pardon me, as a part of our local Sinclair Cares initiative, we are hosting our summer diaper drive to help out local families. You can make a difference by scanning the QR code on your screen to make a financial donation, or you can head to one of the seven donation bins at Middle Georgia Kroger locations or Vineville Baptist Church. All proceeds stay local and benefit the Colby Center right here in Macon.
Chris County is calling on the community to help support kids who have been through traumatic experiences. All week long, Keep Chris Beautiful is hosting a stuffed animal drive. The drive is a way to help give these kids a sense of comfort and protection during a difficult time. You can drop off gently used stuffed animals at the Cordial Chris Chamber of Commerce drive through on South 2nd Street. Well, it may be the hottest day of the year in many parts of America, but if you ask Starbucks, fall is already here. The coffee chain's famous pumpkin spice latte returns Thursday. You know what they say, pumpkin spice, everything nice. Yeah. It includes espresso, pumpkin spice, pumpkin spice sauce, and steamed milk topped with whipped cream and pumpkin pie topping. Two other se seasonal beverages are also joining the fall menu, an iced Apple crisp oat milk shaken espresso. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> it has milk though. Nah. And an ice pumpkin cream chai tea latte, a baked apple croissant. Ooh, Ooh that sounds really good. We're going. We'll all, we are going. And then we'll see Barbie. We'll also be available for the first time. Some returning favorites include the pumpkin cream cold brew and the pumpkin cream cheese muffin. The pumpkin spice wars are starting earlier than ever this year. 7-Eleven and Krispy Kreme debuted their offerings in the first week of August. Dunkin' Donuts was right behind the week of August 14th. I do think that August 14th is a little early to start talking it about is, pumpkin spice and everything nice. That is true, but <laughs> it's always nice because when we see this stuff, it's going to be fall, and then it's going to be Christmas and winter, and that's what I'm really excited for. You know, actually, I was talking <laughs> to somebody in a store the other day because it was not long after July 4th, and I was shopping, a big, big chain store, and that, but they were... They had out this huge Halloween decoration. I said, <laughs> okay, there's Halloween. And I said, Halloween? And I said, am I seeing this thing right? And <laughs> yeah, you know, the people put it out earlier than ever. I, know. I think yeah. some people have out Christmas now. It does feel like it's things like, are getting put out yeah. earlier. Like it'll be. I do think so too. Kroger, it'll be September. And it's well, like, I went Christmas. to Kroger the other day and um, it, they had the Halloween displays ready for all the candy. And they're all on sale, of course. Oh, my goodness. Keep me away from it. I love it. I'll buy the candy and wind up eating it. Yeah, same. Sure. Well, that's all the time we have for WGXA News at 530. We invite you to join us at 6 on ABC 16. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.